Hello! Welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I am doing a book review of Down Beyond Below, Down Below Beyond <laughs> by T.A. Bruno. This is a book coming out July 31st, 2023. It is self-published. It is a sci-fi, clearly, and I've got a hardcover and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book. <laughs> I received a copy of this book from the author in exchange for a fair review, isn't it lovely? And there's a message inside just for me, which I was, uh, which I was very happy about. I was like, oh, <laughs> to be fair, I think he only sent me a review copy because I harassed him on Instagram until he gave me one. I really, really loved his In the Orbit of Sirens book. I know, I know, I need to read the other two. They're on my TBR. And the synopsis of this one just sounded so awesome. Also, he posted some character sketches on his Instagram and one of them was like a, a reptile alien and I was just like, oh, <laughs> I must, I must read this. <laughs> my begging paid off because Down Beyond, Down Below Beyond, oh my God, Bed Bath & Beyond, is an absolutely fun ride featuring several alien cultures and portal technology. And yes, there are reptile aliens, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about? Lavort Atra is a prospector on the planet Teox. While scavenging the wastes of the abandoned world, he discovers a mysterious starship and stakes his claim on it. Little does he know, he just put a big target on his back. Down Below Beyond is a sprawling sci-fi fantasy adventure full of aliens, planets, and portals set in the universe crafted by T.A. Bruno, author of the award-winning Songs of Canaria trilogy. Apparently, yeah, this takes place within the same universe as his trilogy which is really cool which means I do need to read the other two soon <laughs> but you don't need to know anything about his trilogy to read this it totally stands on its own that doesn't explain a lot but you don't really need to know a lot it's a lot of fun if you don't know kind of what's going in but just know that there's a lot of aliens and a lot of portals the book is a mix of found family feels action and really fun world building it features an interesting style because while the book is for adults it has a sort of coziness and ease to it that you could let a kid read it too there's violence in the book but nothing more than you'd see in star wars in fact it retains a very kind of star warsy feel as you know or probably can guess with all my little star wars accoutrement around here i'm a big star wars person i have watched and enjoyed all of the shows i can't wait for ahsoka disney is an evil soul-sucking machine but if they just keep making star wars stuff i will keep paying for disney plus i don't care <laughs> so i don't make the comparison to star wars lightly in fact i don't think i've ever made it on this channel so that's saying a lot <laughs> The aliens are very Star Wars-esque in this novel in that culturally they're kind of homogenous but physically they're very different and they all coexist and accept one another. The tech is also very space opera focused as it's not heavily based on realism and science. It's not a hard sci-fi by any means but it's not like ridiculous. The balance between fun and physics is great. Portals also are always a blast. It doesn't matter how portal technology work. It, it, it's fun. You don't care. It's too much fun. The characters are absolutely delightful. It took me a bit to really care for Lavort, but his arc is, well, it's kind of nice. Honestly, it's such a well kind of wholesome book. <laughs> it brings in some heavy topics, greed, you know, looking the other way when people are taken advantage of, the corruption of power, imprisonment, deterioration of friendship, but in a way that's not traumatic or too dark. The characters are so fun. One of the best things is that there is a graphic glossary at the start that I bookmarked and kept flipping back to. I'm going to show you it because it's really cool. It's got like all the pictures of all the, has pictures of all of the aliens. And I thought that was really fun because I often have trouble picturing aliens based on description alone. So it's kind of nice to be like, oh yeah, these guys are like the kind of rat looking ones, things like that. <laughs> there are tons of species, as I said earlier, but my favorite two characters were of course, my boy, the reptilian Bobsy and his friend Flom. They had a fun sibling dynamic that I really enjoyed. I also love the Moltra, which are like floating balloon tentacle hive mind things, kind of like Zerg, plus the Herogox from, from Halo. I keep making comparisons to other media, but it's not because the book feels like a hodgepodge of other stuff. It's definitely its own creation. I just consume so much, maybe too much sci-fi, um, that when things remind me of other things, that means I really liked the book. <laughs> other things that I loved, there is a great battle scene, climax. There are varied female characters that have their own motivations. There's forerunner technology and the scavenging of said technology that I always love. This line, the Vort didn't know what was lonelier, a world that had a society and lost it or one that never had it at all. And I love, as I've said, the cover, it's so pretty. <laughs> 
there is no love story in this book. While I wouldn't have minded some flirtation between the characters, the lack of romance was not a detriment, and if one had developed between the main character specifically and someone else, it likely would have felt forced or taken up too much space. Of course, this means that Flopsy is all mine, of course. <laughs> Oh my god, Tom's not gonna let me read another one of his books after that. Anyway, my only minor critiques of the book are more personal preferences. One is that I wanted a bit more difference between the alien cultures. If you follow my channel, you know I'm a huge xenoanthropologist and that's like totally my thing. So I was kind of like, I wish I had more. <laughs> and I wish we'd had more downtime with Bayfo and Lavort before the inciting incident to really make the shift in their relationship hit harder. And I kind of wanted a bit more time with the friends on Bloom to give them more time to kind of play off one another. But again, this problem, all of these are kind of me just wanting more of the book, more of it. So that's not really a bad thing. As I said, these are minor critiques. I had a great time with this quick paced, fun, exciting space opera. Definitely check it out. You can still pre-order it. As I said, it comes out um, July 31st. Definitely get the hardcover. It's really nice. It's not like one of those chunky hardcovers that takes up like 90% of your shelf. It's very like slim, but it's just, I don't know, it's really cool. <laughs> and again, thank you so much to the author, T.A. Bruno, for letting me read the book early and for this lovely hardcover. I am, I'm just like so in love with it. So thank you.